In a world overrun with formula movies and lame Hollywood reboots, two brothers from separate mothers scour the outer edges of entertainment to separate the potential cult classics from the B-movie bombs. They watch the films so you don't have to. They are the Keepers of the Frame. Hello, welcome to another episode of Keepers of the Fringe, a very special episode. Uh, I am Derek, and with me as always is the Tony Stark to my happy Hogan, Chris. What's up? Hey! Hey. So, let us... So, this is going to be a different episode for us because uh, we watched um, Spider-Man Homecoming, and we were going to record a normal show, uh, but we started with talking about Spider-Man, and... That ended up being a very long review. Yeah. Where we talked about Spider Man. Well, you know, Spider Man is our f- favorite superhero. At least he's mine. I think he's yours, isn't he? Yeah, he's up there. He yeah. used to be my he's, favorite, but Oh, huh? yeah, who who's your who's your favorite now? Super bitch. My dad. Oh that's <laughs> not nice. He's the wind beneath oh. my wings and shit. Oh. No, I don't know. Oh. He's up there though. He's up there. That's one of my He's he's Spider Man's always been my favorite. Yeah, he's pretty since close I was a kid. to the But anyway, so we ended <laughs> we ended up we ended up having a very lengthy conversation about Spider Man Homecoming. So this whole episode is going to be just our review of Spider Man Homecoming. Um so It's very long. And I'm sorry. <laughs> In advance. <laughs> it's 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 got good parts. It's exciting. You'll enjoy it. Don't listen to this bitch. Bitch sorry. Bitch. Anybody home? You keep it up. You are terminated. <laughs> All right. So, um, of course, since this is Keepers of the Fringe, and this is our Spider-Man review, let me warn you ahead of time. Spoiler warning. There will be spoilers ahead. So if you have not seen Spider-Man and you don't want it spoiled, then wait until you see the movie to listen to our review. But then, if you have seen the, re- the movie... Listen to our review. Let it uh, <laughs> see. See if you shit up. See if you see if you agree with us or disagree with us. We'd love to hear from you. Of course, you can always you know contact us, follow us on Twitter, email us, all that, all that good stuff. Um, which all that shit will be at the end of the show if you want to know how to contact us. So before we get to the review, though, we do have one bit of news information that we want to get to, and that is. It was recently announced that Stan Lee's wife, Joan, has passed away. And we at the Keepers of the Fringe just would like to just give our condolences to Stan Lee and his family on on the loss of his wife. And um, we hope he will be okay. And uh, you know, may she rest in peace. Not your Beautiful, man. Thanks, man. All right. So without further ado, here we go with our review of Spider-Man Homecoming. Sorry again. Take up. <laughs> Spider Man, Spider Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web, any size, catches feet, just like flies. Look out! Here comes the Spider Man. Is he strong? Lives in mud. He's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look. Overhead, hey there, there goes the Spider-Man. In the chill of night, at the scene of a crime, by the street of light, he arrives just in time. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Wealth and fame, he's ignored. Action is his reward to him. Life is a great big pain-up, wherever there's a hang-up. You'll find the Spider-Man! Warning! 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 So, this is going to be our review of Spider-Man Homecoming. So, this is your final and last warning. We're going to be spoiling the shit out of this shit, so... The shit. The shit. It's the shit. So, if you haven't watched it, and you don't want anything spoiled, this is your last warning. Okay, so, Spider-Man Homecoming, what did we think? Yeah. No, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I really myself. liked it. I thought I it was good. Little, yeah. There's certain things that bothered me, but little things. We'll get into that in a bit. Yeah. So first of all, let's uh let's try to do some um 
structure to this, shall we? <laughs> oh, bikini. Let's talk first. Let's talk about... Um, I don't know what the hell kind of structure we want to do. I don't know. This is probably something we should have done off air. Yeah, it probably is, huh? So <laughs> You get to be part of the process now. Yay. So let's talk about the... First of all, let's talk about the actors. Um, they was all nice and stuff. They acted real yeah. good, like... That real good. <laughs> No, like, like I like, I like, um, I like the, um, yeah. So there. <laughs> no, I like Tom Holland as Spider Man. I think he's really good. Yeah, I, I, so. I think he did a really, <laughs> he did a really great job. Um, he's a good Peter Parker and a good Spider Man. Yes, yes, That's very the, good on both. The part people haven't been able to really nail yet. Yeah, they always get one or the other. It seems. Yeah, like Tobey Maguire was like a good Peter Parker, right? But not that good at the Spider Man. Yeah, and I mean he wasn't bad, but I mean no, he, yeah. And Andrew Garfield, he was kind of okay he, he was, as Spider Man. Yeah, he was. But. Yeah, he wasn't too bad as Spider Man, but as Peter Parker, I wasn't. Yeah, I, it wasn't I, right. I wasn't digging it. But uh, there were elements I did like, like him trying to figure out how to to make his webs be able to counteract Shocker and stuff. Like that's right, totally yeah, a, yeah. a Peter Parker thing, you yeah, know, like yeah, experimenting and yeah, that was cool. Yeah, and he was he was the right combination of like nerdy and. Goofy and kind of awkward. Wait, who the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking? I'm talking about Tom Holland as, as Peter. I'm talking Parker. about Andrew Garfield, bitch. Oh, <clears throat> see, I was saying that I liked how he uh, tried to make his own web to counteract. Um, you said shocker, yeah. Oh, Electro, Electro, yeah. But anyway, so and uh, I really I liked um, Michael Keaton as Adrian Toomes, the little child. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> I was waiting for him to say that. Didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good cast. They all did a pretty good job. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. The only thing, the one problem I have with the Vulture thing is that I thought he did a good job and everything, and it was cool looking, you know, enough. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like it felt Vulturey to me. He didn't feel like Adrian Toomes, sort of, really, to me. Well, that's because. In the comics, Adrian Tomb is this old fuck that fucking... Old fucking... <laughs> fucking get off my lawn! Or... Yeah. Which, I was never that big on the like the old man Adrian Tombs thing. Old man Tombs! Old man Tombs! He devotes her to every fly in the sky like that, and it's a... Yeah. But, uh... I yeah, see, like I I see like, what you're saying. Yeah, there. like, I like his take on it, but he didn't really feel like the vulture to me. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. But... I thought he was good, though. I thought, I thought he... Yeah. The way they handled it was pretty good. Yeah, I think so. It was pretty good. And I like... Oh, see, I don't know where I should... Go ahead. Just spit okay. it out. I like that... This is a spoiler. Pretty big one. We're all... Sort of. The whole thing is okay, a spoiler. Yeah, but I'm the first one doing it, so... <laughs> uh, Ooh, you feel naughty. I feel naughty. You feel naughty. Ooh. My This really makes sense. It doesn't, know. And but I like how what I was just talking about how they always kill off the villain and stuff. This one they did not kill the villain. Yes, and I'm like, it's good. And another thing that I did like, it's funny though. I um, I liked a lot of the Marvel, most of the Marvel movies. The villains are kind of thin, like they don't yeah. really get into them enough. But I thought th- I thought they did a good job of getting into his character a little yeah, more. I think so. And his motivation stuff. Now I just read something in somebody's review that they said. Oh, there was too much about the Vulture, about Adrian Toomes. They might as well have just made it an Adrian Toomes movie. And I'm like, Burr? motherfuckers, you're not happy because the other Marvel villains they never get into. And on this one they get into and you're, tap- you're not happy because, oh, it was too much. I didn't feel that at all. No, I think it was balanced pretty well. I think it was. I mean, yeah. I think they did just enough. I mean, I think if they did any less, it would, it would be really shallow. And yeah, exactly. they covered it in, in, a nice, in a nice way it explains how... A lot of the villains are in the future are going to have the tech. Yes. Yep. Like I like that because it kind of makes makes it makes sense. I mean, you know, right. And there are a couple other um, villains introduced. Villains slash. Well, so they had uh, they had the shocker, but they had what was interesting is they actually had two shockers because he killed the first one. Adrian Toomes killed the first one. Yeah. So that was cool, and that was just. But he did, he wasn't like in full shocker outfit this time at least. Yeah, he had like the sleeves sort of. Yeah, yeah, he had the sleeves. But that was cool because that was so. Oh yeah, I guess we should mention that. So the movie starts out with back right after the first Avengers movie, and 
Oh yeah. Yeah. And Adrian Toomes is like uh he's cleaning up the mess and he has like a whole crew and stuff and and then like the government comes in with damage control. Actually was that government or just Tony Stark? But whatever it was, it was I think it was it was awesome. It was damage control. They brought in damage control, which is fucking awesome. Although it makes me wonder if they're ever if they've ki- killed the damage control show they were planning on doing or not. Because I haven't heard anything on that in a long time. Yeah, me either. But anyway, so Toombs and his crew decide, you know, they get they he basically put his whole life savings into um Yeah, because they get the contract. Yeah, they get the contract and the crew. Yeah. So the government comes in and takes it away from him. So, he, you know, he's basically screwed. So he says, he decides, hmm, instead of just uh, going bankrupt, why don't we start uh, stealing some of this stuff and selling it on the black market? Which So he becomes like a kind of gun runner, kind of. Yeah, and he has like a a guy that um, makes all the different tech and stuff. Yes, who, I don't know if you realized, is the tinkerer. What was his name? I didn't even hear him. Did they say his name? Yes, and I completely forget his name now. But it was it was the Tinkerer. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so there was actually two villains there, Shocker and Tinkerer. Although when you say it like that, it doesn't, tinkerer. It does, Shocker and Tinkerer doesn't sound like two villains. It sounds like two... <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a fun night. <laughs> What's in store for tonight? A little of the Shocker and a the Tinkerer there and... A... But that so then it fast forwards eight years later and the they're they've got their business going where they're stealing alien tech and stuff and there was there was some cool stuff in there and they they're selling it and and Tinker was making stuff out of it like there was some cool Chitari stuff and some Ultron stuff which is kind of cool and some other oh yeah that's right that's um right. and then there was the the they had a black hole bomb I think they only mentioned it but that was from Thor two. So, yeah, so it was pretty cool, all that stuff. Yeah, that's how he made his wings and yeah. how the shocker got the gauntlets yeah. there, the yeah. shock gauntlets. The shock gauntlets. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I don't know, it was pretty good. I got to say. Well, I also had a little cameo for uh, the scorpion there, too. Yes, that's right. Um, Matt Gargan was in there. He wasn't the scorpion yet, but should hopefully be in the future. That was very interesting. And he um, is... I forget the actor's name, shit. But he was in um, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Oh, really? Yes. And, he did uh, not look familiar to me at all. Really? And I've watched both those shows. Have you? <clears throat> uh, hold on. Just a second, and I'll look it up. Talk amongst yourselves. But, um, he, yeah, so that was cool seeing that. And they had uh, Donald Glover was in it, and he plays... Um, he's actually the Prowler. Oh, yeah? Who was a villain... But then became a good guy, yeah. So, and then the other, the prowler was an old guy. Am I thinking of somebody else? Um, I think there's been a couple of prowlers actually, if I remember correctly, or oh, maybe not. Again, I'm old, my memory not what it used to be. Um, but yeah, and then he he mentioned his nephew at one point, and his the the guy the prowler that he's playing his nephew is actually Miles Morales. Miles. So that people are thinking that could be Aaron Davis. That's we how. It, who he plays as the Prowler. And what the fuck was I looking up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. The, the the guy who played Scorpion. Oh, yeah. Michael, Michael Mando, or Mondo, who was, as I said, was in Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. I did not, I did not recognize him. Yeah. <clears throat> was Or maybe he wasn't. Oh, fuck. No, it was. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> he plays uh, Nacho. Nacho. Nacho Varga, who, who is um, the one who is going to, who wants to kill Victor Salamanca in Better Call Saul. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, and then uh, there's actually a, quite a few of his, um, his friends were actually in the movie where, well, not really his friends, but the group of kids were in there. There was Betty Brant. She was playing the oh, yeah. really bad school newscaster. <laughs> she was just like very stiff, and that was kind of cute and funny. It was kind of weird though that they played the uh, F Mary date game. Yeah, I was like, mm-hmm. that seems a little. Yeah, I guess teenagers would probably do that. Yeah, I mean for the kids in the audience. 
I don't know. I don't know. I did she see didn't a, say I did see another comment on on one of the reviews that somebody complained. Oh, I liked the movie, but there was I didn't like the swearing and the, the I'm like there was not that it's not like there was a lot of swearing. There was a little no. bit. And they never actually said the F word. Yeah. That's fucked in case you're wondering. But it was weird. I mean, yeah, probably kids, you know, would think of the children, man. Think of the children. But it was fine. I didn't think it was that bad. No, it was just weird. <laughs> I was like, what? what? That was weird. And it was weird, too, as I found the lady, the girl that plays Liz there or whatever. Yep. I heard she's like 27. I believe it. Which that's just, <laughs> that makes it seem weird. Laura Harrier. Yeah. Uh, actress. Uh, I don't know. I just heard it. I was like, what? She's 20. I mean, not 27, but. It doesn't have her personal info on her. I mean, she looks young. That's what's weird about it. She looks like she would be in high school. Yeah. And then she's like older than everybody. That's weird. Yeah, really. It's kind of but it makes me feel bad because I better because I thought she was cute. So I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> she's twenty seven. Yay! Yeah, all right. I don't feel weird now. But she's like a lot older than like Tom Holland and shit. Yeah, I don't know how old he is. He's like, well, oh, he's probably like twenty ish. Right? Yeah, probably. Um, so for me, it was cool because there were a lot of little Easter eggs like that and shit in there. And for one of them, which was kind of interesting, which kind of started me off with a smile was the opening theme um to the movie was the spider-man theme from the old tv show the old cartoon yeah, orchestrated orchestrated yeah done by an orchestra which is really cool i was like oh that's and then it, the movie started out with um it it came up on the screen instead of film by peter parker which was kind of funny i'm like it, i was like what and then it showed uh like yeah he was like filming his trip to uh Berlin and stuff, and so in Civil War, and yeah, where you met up with all that, yeah, that, that was. And he was dealing with uh, Happy Hogan from Iron Man, played by John Favreau, of course. <laughs> who, who it was so funny because Happy wanted nothing to do with Peter Parker, yeah, and it was just <laughs> so funny. Uh, there was some good, some good interactions there, I thought, yeah, it was good. And so I started with a big smile on my face because of that, and I think that set me off for a good in a good mood for the movie so i was pretty receptive to it um and it was it was fun i enjoyed it it was a lot yeah, of fun it's a, good, it's a fun it was, movie yeah it's a really fun movie um of course there's always some some things yeah i mean no movie's perfect so there's some things that um probably we didn't like which we haven't discussed yet so let's discuss yeah, we haven't, like discuss anything about it yet yeah so let's discuss <clears throat> that and see and do some comparison and see what we thought okay so you go first why did the What's your beef? the vulture one? Oh, that's right, you did. Um, all right, my turn. I didn't like your mama. Ah, uh, sorry. Not what I heard. Oh, I heard you were lying to be my new papa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, <laughs> touche. <laughs> um, so one thing that bothered me about the movie was the whole <clears throat> uh, what's her name there Zendaya thing. Yeah. Because there's a whole, there was a whole thing on the internet. Is she playing Mary Jane? Is she not? She's not playing Mary Jane. Oh, she's playing a character called Michelle. And then, spoiler alert, at the end of the movie, all the way at the end of the movie, there, after everything's done, they're talking and, and uh, they want her to become head of the, 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 what the hell was it? Academic decathlon or whatever. Yeah, some horse shit. One of them nerd things. <laughs> and, one of them nerd things. One of them nerd things. Nobody got time for that. Nobody got time. And uh, they, you know, something blah blah. Michelle, you can be charged. And so she says, uh, "Call me MJ. That's what all my friends call me." And you're like, "Ugh." Like, ah, she's not Mary Jane, but she's still MJ. Yeah, I did not like that. Yeah, and funny. I don't understand what they were going for with that at all. I don't know. I read something that Kevin Feige said, but it sounded like a little double talky. Like, yeah. <laughs> It didn't really make complete sense. I just, I just, like I said, I don't understand what the point of it was, what they were going for with that. Why they, is it because she doesn't look anything like Mary Jane, so we're not going to make her Mary Jane, but well, she I think is going to be MJ. People, and, people were fucking all bent out of shape and shit. Yeah. Although I did like her character up until that point, but. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird because if she is going to be the Mary Jane, she's like, <laughs> like a weird, like, stocky. Yeah, like, yeah, know, she was, was like just, stalking yeah. Peter like crazy. Yeah, it was weird. Um, but yeah, she wasn't a bad character. But yeah, I don't know. Up until that point, I was just like, ugh. Yeah, it's just weird. Yeah, I didn't care. And another that. thing, well, hitting it to me now, 
It's Flash Thompson, which I didn't. I mean, he was a douche, but he wasn't a douche in the right way. I don't he was, yeah, he wasn't a douchey douche. He, was just he wasn't douche. like the the big douche jock douche. douche guy, you know. Like yeah, he was on the same act yeah. the same as Peter. Yeah, I know it was weird. Like it just didn't feel right. Yeah, and then I think of you know if they ever do Agent Venom, which I you know that's way ahead of oh, the fucking game. Yeah, I, mean, I don't picture that dude being <laughs> no, no no shit. <clears throat> Agent Venom, that would be good. But that's way in the... So I didn't really like that. Yeah, I wasn't too crazy about that. But see, it's not a lot of like big things. They're just like a weird... I think I had read about that, so I kind of was like, eh. I think I read, like the other day, I read something about, oh, we're doing a different type of Flash Taunts, and he's going to be more like a smart kid, but still kind of a jerk. But, eh. Yeah, it was a little... Because eh. it, it kind of seems like they toned him down too much. Like he still he still picked on Peter. He even called him Penis Parker at one point. But I wasn't feeling like the like I feel like <laughs> he wasn't really a threat. Yeah, like Peter was like yeah, like because in the comics that you know Flash was always you know yeah he always he, he embodied everything that that nerdy kids were like I can totally relate to that. Oh yeah, totally. That fucking totally. football player guy is yep. a fucking asshole, exactly. but everybody just kisses his ass. Right, like you totally believe that. And right. this one, you're like, what? I don't feel like I feel like the football guy. <laughs> we just was as soon as kick his ass, ass the fucking yeah, no shit. And then the other thing is because in the comics, Flash is is a total asshole in high yeah. school, but then he turns around, he joins, you know, he joins the military, he loses his legs. Um, he's always, you know, he's always been a fan of Spider Man, so he, then it becomes Agent Venom and stuff. So Flash kind of does like a, a complete. Well, he, like, grows up. Yeah, he grows up, exactly, um, kind of forcefully when, he, you know, he loses his legs and shit. Yeah. So I don't feel like, I don't feel like this Flash would have... That arc. Yeah. Well, yeah. As a, yeah, as dramatic a turn. And you're right, I don't see him being, <laughs> being Agent Venom. No. So, yeah. So but, I mean, was, they're probably not even, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. Yeah. Well, they are doing a Venom movie, so I don't fucking know, but... Yeah, but it's not supposed to have anything to do with this Spider-Man, allegedly. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, so... So that's one thing, also. All right, let's see. we got Vulture, Mary Jane, Flash. Well, one thing I didn't like, kind of, is the suit. Like, I like, like, when it got fully unlocked and he had all the, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the bells and whistles. Like, I like it. It's cool. But at the same time, it, I feel like it diminishes who Spider-Man is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Although, yeah, that's kind of how Spider-Man is now in the comics, but he's got his own company and all this shit. Um, but yeah, I know what I mean exactly. Yeah, because it's kind of like a Spider-Man Year One kind of story, yeah. you know. But then he has a suit that can do everything, and it's like it just kind of takes away from who he is because he's you know Sp- you know Peter Parker is fucking brilliant, right? And he always had to solve his own problems a lot of the times and right, figure yeah. out how to deal with shit. And yeah. now he's got a suit that can do fucking anything, and it's like. Oh. Well, I guess that was supposed to be the whole point of when they when Tony took it away and stuff, but yeah, but he got it back though. Right? So yeah. Like, I don't know. I I like it when it, before everything was unlocked. I was cool with that, but yeah, the spider tracers. And I know it's kind of weird. Yeah. But then he had the voice and his, you know, like that. Was, like did you realize that thing. was Jennifer Connelly? I read that, but it didn't sound like her to me. I know it didn't. Yeah, as Karen, the voice. Karen. Karen. That whole <clears throat> the whole scene that was kind of funny though when he was. Locked in the uh, in the Damage warehouse, yeah. yeah. And he was talking to her and shit. That was kind of funny. Yeah, like I like it, but it's just weird that like it I is. We- no, I yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's like on the one hand, I'm like, oh, that's really cool, but then on the other hand, you're like, but that's not really Spider Man. Yeah, per se. So I don't know. Well, and yeah, you don't want that because he's almost like a, it's almost an Iron Man suit, kind of. You know, in a way, yeah, yeah. And you don't want that to be. Um, you don't want it to become that. Him just to become another Iron Man type. Like they were saying, there was like five hundred and fifty different uh, web, yeah, variations. Yeah, like, I'm like that's that's a little ridiculous. But I mean, that's another big thing that I always they never really do either. Like Peter Parker figuring shit out. I mean, that's a big part of it. He's like, yeah, all shit's going on. He's got to figure out how to deal with his life and the Spider Man thing, and he has to use his brain to figure out how to fucking defeat a foe or something, you know? Right. Yeah. And now he's got a thing that can just do anything, and it's like, mm. uh, it kind of takes a, a good element out of the story, you know? Yeah, well, we'll see how how that they handle that going forward. Yeah. See, it didn't, like, 
it's weird. Like it, like I liked it and it bothered me at the same time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So I was like, oh, 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 oh I don't know. <laughs> but overall, I enjoyed the movie. Yeah, I really did too. I know I'm sounding like I didn't. But... Now you asked me a question earlier when we were at the comic book store. Um, you said you asked me if I liked it better than Spider Man Two, and I don't think I'm prepared to say that exactly. As uh, Spider Man Two was awesome and still holds a place. In my heart. <laughs> um, so I don't know if I'm exactly prepared to say that, but I definitely put it up there as one of the best Spider-Man films, which... To me, it's either it's either number two or this one as the best one. Right. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't know yet either. I can't say. I know. It's too fresh. I might have to watch them both again. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Spider-Man 2 in a long time. I haven't either. That, yeah, that one was so good. But see, like the way they handled Doc Ock and everything. Yeah, like they did Doc Ock, but he wasn't really Doc Ockish. <laughs> but that's true. But it was good. But though. it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike <clears throat> the first Spider-Man, where they botched the Green Goblin Ugh. horribly. I mean, William Defoe did a good job. Willem, <laughs> Willem, <laughs> Willem, uh, Willem Defoe. He would have been. Would have been that they could have done so much better with him. He's, like when he's first cackling and driving with the backfire from the, the glider. Oh, and the yeah, smoke yeah. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that was just fucking awesome. Yes. And then the Power Rangers suit showed yeah. up. I was like, oh. Will, yeah, Willem Dafoe was awesome, and I wanted to see a better version of the Goblin for him. Yeah. I still want to see him. I still wanted to see him as the Goblin. Yeah, like there's that test but, footage going around yes. with the old Green Goblin thing that they were going to do. If them. you haven't seen that yet. Watch that. That is so. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know. It's so fucking awesome and creepy and just. It's been just, floating around for years now. But yeah. Yeah, if you happen to not see that. Yeah, look up. Just look up, like, Green Goblin mask test footage or. Yeah. Green sure. Goblin test footage. It's so like fucking that. amazing. It's, I mean, it's not done completely yet, but you could no. just tell. Yeah, oh, yeah. And if you just watch the video and watch how it moves and stuff, like the face. And, yeah, there's, like, two different videos. And one of them shows, like,. Trying to do like you know expressions and stuff, and that shit, <laughs> man. The kids would have been fucking oh, shitting shit, yeah. themselves. That'd give them. you nightmares. <laughs> and it was fucking awesome. It was so, oh man, that would have been so awesome if they had used that in the movie. Yeah, but they didn't. They went with the power. You know, I heard people say they didn't like it, but I'm like, it's fucking. I know. Been like, how can you not like that? And with William Defoe behind that, just fucking yeah, chewing up the scenery. Oh man, fucking awesome. that would have been fucking awesome. I hope that they do Green Goblin in the new movie somewhere. I hope so, too. And do it cool. Good. Yeah. Do it right. Yeah. So, um, that brings me up to my next item. There were some uh, interesting little Easter eggs in the movie. Um, some really cool stuff. Um, like, <laughs> like, a couple of interesting things I found. Like, Sp- Sp- uh, Sp- Peter's friend, best buddy there, is uh, I originally... I'm sure a lot of people thought this as well. I thought it was going to be uh, what's his name there? Is it Genki from from the Miles Morales Spider-Man? Because he kind of he kind of resembles him in a way. But it, it's actually a character called Ned Leeds, who is one of the men who becomes Hobgoblin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Quite interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, very. I thought he was good. I mean, yeah, he, he was kind of funny. Yeah, that's one thing that sucks too. Good. Like the trailers kind of took a lot of took a lot of the impact of a lot of scenes out of you know. Yeah, so like, as trailers do. <clears throat> yeah, but there's always... so many moments that would have been better if I didn't already see them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like when exactly. he came into the room when his when his friend was there. Yeah, because you know, was, and he dropped the Death Star. Yeah, like you already saw that. that. Um, that. Death Star, by the way, I have always fucking wanted that Death Star, and it's fucking expensive. So I don't know where the fuck Mr. Leeds got it, but... <laughs> Must be some of the hobgoblin money. Yeah. At least they rebuilt it at the end, though. So. They had a little moment where he gave Peter the Emperor and he put it on top. <laughs> anyway. So, that was cool. And it makes me wonder where if they're going to do anything with that. Now, yeah. I just <clears throat> heard... That there's going to be actually five, it's a five part story arc for oh, yeah? the Spider Man. Yeah, I just read that lately. Cookie. Cookie, yeah. Well, he's going to be in the Infinity War movies and he's going to be in 
have his three own movies. So that must be. Oh, that. maybe, yeah. But uh, so it makes me wonder if they're going to actually do something with Ned Leeds becoming Hobgoblin or whatever at some point. Who knows? I don't know, man. That seems way too early. Even in. Well, yeah. Uh, That's another thing that I didn't like. I mean, I overall don't like, but do it's okay. But but they started him so young again. It's like, I you know, Sp- Spider Man hasn't been in high school since I don't fucking know when <laughs> now. Except for like the ultimate, which kind of felt had an ultimate comic vibe to it. A little, yeah, like the Peter Parker. See, I did like, I do like that because I don't feel like they really co- ever covered him in high school well enough. Like yeah. the, the Tobey Maguire thing was kind yeah, of, yeah. and then the Andrew Garfield thing was. Eh. But like that's what I mean. Like I'm sick of seeing it now, though. I'm just like, but I'm yeah, Spider Man. Well, I'm not sick of it because I don't feel like I saw it properly yet. So on that, yeah. on that, we disagree. <laughs> Anybody home? That can be only one. That can be only one. Well, <laughs> that can be a one plus the one of what well, is one over there. And well, that, see, I don't, I don't hate it, but I mean, I, I just no, I know, like, what, I know what you mean. Yeah, but I think but, it's good. Like, I kind of want to see how this Peter progresses and turns into Spider Man, right? Spider Man, and uh, until one day he can join the Avengers. Which so another spoiler at the end near the end of the movie. Uh, Tony Stark brings him to up to the new advan- adventures, <laughs> the Avengers new um, headquarters, and he he tells him he can join the Avengers, and he he presents him with a new suit, an even more high tech suit. I didn't uh, really like that suit. I mean, I, wasn't... I didn't. I didn't either. Um, but then he, you know, he decides he's not ready yet, and blah blah blah. So, but the suit, I could have sworn. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of looked. I saw some, like, white elements, I thought, or gray elements or something. You said something like the Insomniac thing? Yeah. I don't know. Like, a little bit? A little bit, maybe. So I'm wondering if maybe that's where they got the... the Insomniac game? Thing? Yeah, maybe. where that, they got that idea for that suit was from that, maybe? It's I don't possible. know. It kind of reminded me of the... It is possible. Uh, the big time suit, a little bit. Uh, the chest area. Yeah, the, yeah. The way, like, the design. Yeah, that too, yeah. But anyway... I didn't like that suit. Yeah, I'm like, I hope that's not his new suit. <laughs> I know. Right? Don't but keep changing his suit. His yeah. suit's pretty cool. I got but then, used to it now. Unless they do the uh, Iron Spider-Man suit, yeah, which you use back in Civil War, the yeah, comic I mean, book, yeah, which is really cool. Um, another thing I like that I do like though is that they, it's a smaller scale. Like that's what I was saying too. Is that yes? Because you know every movie can't be a world. You know, catastrophe, right? Because you're just like, okay, what the fuck? Right, that's right, you're, exactly. Like it feels like it's the right level of for a Spider-Man. For a Spider-Man, you know, exactly, like, right? Because he he wanted to he wanted to be an Avenger after Civil War, and he was, you know, but Tony Stark told him he wasn't ready, which he wasn't ready. So yeah, it was good to see him handle like a Vulture level. And I think it should say smaller scale. Yes. Oh yes, definitely. So that's what I, that I'm like. You, I don't know what you guys are doing because you're gonna, every movie is a whole world-shattering catastrophe that you right, have to yeah. stop. I'm like, how many? You can only do that so many. Right, exactly. Like the boy cried wolf kind of thing. I'm yeah. like, okay, the world's fucking. Yeah, yeah we got right, it. Right. And then yeah, I guess you'll know, save it at the end. I'm like, you can't. If you keep putting the expectation, you can't keep out doing yourself. Right. <laughs> it's not possible. Because that's the same thing with with uh, they did with Ant Man. It was just a small scale yeah. thing, which is good. Like it. I mean, of course. Iron Man and Thor and Captain America, you expect them to be doing the big stuff. But Spider Man and and the Ant Man and, and shit like that, it's cool to have like the small not like like not the not necessarily the Netflix level stuff like Luke Cage yeah. and Daredevil. Like one step up from that, like between that and the big guys. You got like the Spider Man. Yeah. The Spiderman. Spiderman. And yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I like I like that they did that. Yeah, that was cool. And they didn't kill the villain. And you know, they like, didn't kill the villain. That's just a waste of it is, future yeah. potential. Even if you don't oh, use yeah. them, just leave them in the cards, you know? Right. So, yeah. So, I who hate knows? That when they do that. And, I'm and like, maybe, thank God you didn't kill him. Maybe we'll get a version of the Sinister Six at some point, which would be cool. Crazy. That'd be awesome. Um, but another thing I like, I do like the way they handled kind of the um, multiple, multiple villains thing here. I yeah, think they did I mean, they it like really... like you had the vulture who was the main villain and he was like the head of the gang, and then you had the shocker who was not necessarily a henchman, but uh, he was kind of a he was a lower level guy, 
And um, and then the Tinkerer, he was kind of like the support guy. He was like building all the weapons and shit. So it kind of worked. It really did. Yeah. I like the way they handled that. And that'd be cool to see, you know, Shocker in the future, maybe. Yeah. The whole that'd be cool. Yeah. Going. yeah. Get the Scorpion in there. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to see that. But I wonder what it would have if they were going to go to J. Jonah and stuff. Like the, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It seems wrong if they didn't, it but. <laughs> I wonder if Sony gave them permission to use Jonah or not, too. Oh, that just reminds me of one other thing I, I kind of don't like. Oh. Is that Aunt May oh. finds out. What? Uh, Aunt May finds out. See, I did like that. I don't know. I mean, he's, especially when he's, like, in high school, it doesn't seem right for her to know yet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, See, I mean, in I the Ultimates, know. they did that, right? Yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I kind of like. Yeah, actually, there was a lot of ultimate influence in here. I think a lot of the movies. Ultimates, kinda, my, yeah. I think that was their whole goal with the ultimates. Were like, how can we make it our own shit and get people that read the comics prepared for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, because you know, everybody goes, it's not like the comic. They're like, well, no, it kind of is like the it's comic. Like the ultimates. Yeah, I think that's. What, I think that was their maybe, point. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know. I kind of like. I like. I I was okay with it, and it was kind of a funny. See, see, it takes a lot, of, a lot of story elements out. The same with the suit thing. Like, it solves so many problems that you're like, you're not leaving. I mean, not that you so, know, everybody wants to even run, you know, oh, I don't want May to find out. But, I mean, it takes a lot of elements out of the potential storytelling, you know. Yeah, but it could add some other ones, so we'll see. Yeah. I mean, like, everybody knows he's fucking smart. Yeah, <laughs> and, I know what you're saying. And then his suit can do everything. You're like, well, <laughs> it takes a little so again, I liked it. I'm not saying I didn't like it. But. Right, but there, there, so there were, there was a couple of interesting things in the movie that I really, really did like a lot. There was some interesting Easter eggs and some interesting um, homages, <laughs> homages. Um, one thing that I loved was there was a scene where after it was oh one thing that was interesting was how tombs kind of figured out that peter was spider-man that was interesting i kind of like that that was oh yeah that's his um the vulture wound up being liz's father right which was the girl he liked in school and he was well, taking her to homecoming i'm guessing probably stepfather or something maybe yeah well Cause, it could be as well because well, i don't know because i mean her name is liz allen and he's adrian tomb so could yeah be. i don't know either way but yeah, I, I don't so, think I actually I remember with the MJ thing with what's her noodle there, Zendaya. Zen, yeah. I heard that she was his daughter or something like that. So I wasn't even thinking that. Uh, so when he showed up to the house, I actually like threw me off. I, like, I know, I had not read I tried not to read too much um on the internet about about the movie, so that got me too when he opened the when so there were Peter was taking Liz to the homecoming dance. He shows up at her house, rings the doorbell, door opens, and it's Adrian Toomes. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. And I was like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, because they, totally, was... they did mention he had family and stuff, but I didn't even think of it at all. Right, not at all. So, good job. And it was cool the way they did, did it with the music, too, because you, you totally felt like how people were all excited and getting ready. And, yeah, yeah. And then it gets there, and then it all <laughs> just, the music stops. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> And that was a good scene too, um, like Tombs talking to to Peter and like Peter. So if, I mean, he doesn't figure it out right away. Um, so he, like he's talking, Tombs is talking to him in the kitchen, and he's got a knife because he's making dinner or whatever, or cooking or whatever. And Peter's just like all like frozen with like kind of I don't know fear and shock and yeah, he's just like oh. but but it kind of works because uh, they just think that he's. He's um, nervous because he's taking Liz to the dance. So at first... He did not have a good game face. (laughs) He did not. (laughs) He was like, oh. Uh, But then as the... So Toombs gives him a ride to the dance. um, And as they're all talking, he kind of like... You sound... You know, he's like kind of putting pieces, puzzle pieces together. You sound kind of familiar. And uh, there was a whole thing where they went to Washington and... And uh, Spider-Man saved Liz's life, but Peter wasn't there. So Tombs kind of pieced that all together. And yeah, because Liz said he he works with Tony Stark, and he right. knows Spider-Man. And yeah, then right. Yeah, started putting it together, and right. it was like so. It was kind of cool because so he was like he's like a, a pretty smart guy overall. Um, and I think Michael Keaton played him really well. I yeah, really, I think he did, did a good job. I know he, what you're saying. Not yeah, it didn't feel like the Vulture, but right. but he was he was good. a good villain. Yeah. 
not a, maybe not the perfect vulture, but definitely a, good, a really great villain. And um, that probably kind of reminded me of Spider Man One. Remember when he like him and uh, Norman kind of have that moment where we were at dinner and <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yep, I do remember that. But the point I was actually getting to. <laughs> Well, I don't give a shit about that. Was all that. <laughs> no. Was that afterwards, um, Peter had lost the suit. Tony took the suit back because he fucked up. And so he had this really weird kind of Scarlet Spider-esque costume with like a hoodie oh, yeah. and shit. Right. So there was a little kind of Easter egg. And he he goes and he, he goes after Toombs, who's in his hideout, and he sneaks into his hideout. And they have they have this, you know, confrontation and I liked how like Toombs was saying all this shit to him, and and he and Peter said something like I forget what he said. Like, to why him. are you telling me this? Yeah, why are you telling me this? And he said he said I'm trying to get you to understand or something. He goes, and also I was trying to get the the wing the wings to to start up. Yeah, give it time <laughs> to get there, and <clears throat> and then he kind of attacks him a, a that little. That kind of reminded me of the Green Goblin. I was going to say that, yeah, like the Green Goblin glider, um, and he like this the wings kind of fly on their own and they start chasing spider-man around and spider-man says something like you couldn't even hit me with it or whatever and he said i wasn't trying to hit you and he brought like the whole building down on top of spider-man and then there was a really awesome scene where where peter was stuck under all the rubble and he was trying to to get out of it and stuff and that's actually um reminiscent of a comic story from way back in the day i forget what issue it was but but spider-man was stuck in a pile of rubble like that and he couldn't get out the whole issue was him like trying to get out or like a big part of the issue yeah was he like in a sewer or something yeah yeah it was like in a sewer so it was kind of a nice like homage to that so it was cool and and that kind of got me too i was a little not choked up but i was like oh i'm like you that was bitch. that was really good <laughs> no, <laughs> <I don't mean. laughs> um but that was kind of like i was like oh this is that was a really cool scene and he like you know yeah and then that's where he was well done yeah became spider-man sort of in a way you know yeah, sure. Because he was first like you right, know, like, yeah. help me, like you know, right, yeah. And then he kind of just found the strength in himself to get him out of it, right? Like, yeah, so that was cool. So he kind of became Spider Man there, sort of in a way, like he, right, yeah, took some of. He grew up a little bit in that moment because he's like, <laughs> oh shit, I'm gonna fucking die unless I, right, I know yeah. that I can help myself, here right, and I gotta do it. And I think that did. Uh, yeah, you're right. He, he did like that moment kind of forced him to grow up a bit. Yeah, which was cool. Another thing that I did like, and I've heard some weird complaints about, no origin story. Enough. We've seen Peter's origin. We all know his origin story. But it by still now. is an origin story in a way. <laughs> it's not. Right. It is, but it, it, they did it in a weird way. And they they briefly mentioned it, like he was he was talking to uh, his buddy Ned about how he got his powers and everything, and so he mentioned the spider and stuff. And he kind of offhand mentioned his Uncle Ben. <laughs> Excuse me. His Uncle Ben. In a... <laughs> Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. It's Uncle Ben. <laughs> my favorite rice. You just had gay yes. Yeah. I just had some gay yes. <laughs> Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. <laughs> Who the fuck is Uncle Bob? <laughs> Uncle Bob. I'm not going to say Uncle so, Bob yeah. makes bomb rice. <laughs> <laughs> so I okay. read, you know. Of course, I read another comment. Somebody was complaining that he didn't have his Uncle Ben motivating him to be Spider-Man. And I don't think that was... Necess- I mean... Well, they didn't really go into exactly what happened. They just kind of yeah. made a mention of what... You know, he's like, oh, I don't want to do that to Aunt May or all the shit she's going through. Right. And you just knew what she was... Because we all know. We like, all know the fucking story. <clears throat> we don't need to rehash it again. Yeah. A third fucking time. Or fourth, if you count. But the, uh, the Uncle Ben... Time thing is kind of an important element it is it. yes and i i don't think they were ignoring it i just think they weren't focused on it, focusing on it as much yeah but, in this particular instance but it also is still is an origin <laughs> just in the weird not in the way you're yeah not how he became spider-man not in the traditional sense right yeah but how he really became spider-man right but it wasn't the same old... Yeah, like he was a normal kid and then get bit by the spider. And, uh, what do I do with these amazing powers? I don't know. I'll go into wrestling. <laughs> Bone size ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bone size ready. That's a nice outfit. Did your husband pick it up for you? <laughs> I do. That's like the best 
Tobey Maguire Spider Man line, I think. Uh, so, yeah, Bones so it's all cool stuff. <laughs> Bones always ready. Now, let's see if I can. But yeah, it was kind of like a Spider Man year one story. Yeah. So it still is an origin, but. In a... Yeah, but not like an origin. Yeah. 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 But it was good. It was really good. It's either the best or second best Spider-Man movie. I can't tell yet. <laughs> I know. Again, I'll have to watch both of them again to before I can make my final decision. But And I'm interested to see where it goes. And I think Tom Holland did a, a really good job. Yes. Uh, and yes. I'd like to see him grow with the role. And I think he could grow he bring a lot role. to it. You know? <laughs> grow with the role. Well, you know. I, know, I found that funny. He's pretty young still, so. Yeah, definitely. And I, I I am excited to see more. Definitely. Definitely. So are we all done there? Well, um apparently we are. Because I had a couple I had two articles on Spider Man that I wanted to find that I wanted to talk about, but now I can't fucking find them. So, once again, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> well see this is the part we're not supposed to talk so we can edit it out later. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh remember that there. there it is. Yeah, I remember. All right, so here it is. Um, This article is on Screen Rant. It says, 15 burning questions we have after Spider-Man Homecoming. So I thought we'd give our thoughts. I'm not going to read the whole article, but uh, no more Avengers Tower. So basically they moved out of Avengers Tower. Tony Tony Tark. Tony Tark. Tony Tark. Sold it. And they didn't didn't say who he sold it to, though. But it says here, it's like basically saying... That it might not be all that interesting normally, but it could be interesting to think about who might buy the tower. And then it says, uh, <laughs> it says, here's an idea. Wouldn't it make a great Baxter building? Um, sure, but. That would be cool. Um, Nobody will be in it. I know. The Fantastic <laughs> Four are Fox. And this is Sony, a uh, Sony Marvel venture. I gotta say, Sony, this is the smartest thing you could have done. Well, not the smartest would have been to just give them back Spider-Man altogether. But this is the second smartest thing you could have done. Fucking Sony. Fucking Sony. So the next question is, can Vulture keep a secret? Uh, he fig- Of course, as we mentioned, he figures out who that Peter is, Spider-Man. Uh, he goes to jail at the end of the movie. He meets up with Mac Gargan again, Scorpion. And Mac says, oh, I heard you know who Spider-Man is. And he doesn't. He says he doesn't know and he doesn't tell him. Yeah, he's like, oh, if I knew who he was, he'd think I'd still be alive or something. Right, so the question is... What is he going to do with that knowledge, if anything? Well, technically, Spider-Man saved his life. This is so true. So he might be, you know, he might be respecting that. Yes, possibly, yes. Or he's got his plans for when he gets the fuck out of there. So the question is then is, did he have a complete change of heart? Or probably not. is he planning, is he going to make some plans while he's in jail to do, do something to Spider-Man? We don't I'm afraid know. that I feel like the vulture is going to become what the Green Goblin should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got that too. Which I'm like, oh, oh that means the Green Goblin ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is, uh, bright futures in store? So I guess there was actually a lot, there were a lot of Easter eggs, uh, some obvious ones, and then there were some ones that I'll, even I missed. Uh, of course, they talk about the whole Michelle MJ thing, Ned Leeds, um, but then his the academic decathlon team had some notable Marvel names, uh, such as Cindy Moon, who is the heroine known as Silk in in the Marvel comics. Uh, Sally Averill, who becomes the acrobatic Bluebird, no Bluebird. kind of vaguely familiar with, uh, and Abraham Brown, eventually known as Black Tiger. So then the question is, will they ever, will we ever see those characters or are they just using their names? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Like, that's the big question I had with the Ned Leeds. Is he going to become, are they planning on making him Hobgoblin someday or is he just, uh... so yeah. here's the next question is, what does J. Jonah Jameson think? Uh, it uh, says his costume menace swing around New York like he owns a place, and you just know that it bothers J. Jonah Jimmonson, who was not in the movie, as we mentioned earlier. So it says here, it makes sense in a way. Peter is still a high school student, so he's too young to really begin his career as a freelance photographer. Um, so that's why there, that's why there's probably no sign of Jonah in Homecoming. Uh, but 
his, you know, Jameson's hatred is such a crucial part of Spider-Man's mythos that it would be a shame if we never saw him on screen again. Oh, and also, J. Jonah Jameson is the one who uh, paid to get Matt Gargan turned into the Scorpion. Yeah. He was the one behind that. So that's a... So will... Yeah, that could be a like story there. Future. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, because they, they set up the Scorpion... So, I mean, are we going to see Jameson? He got to at some point. Yeah. I got to say, weird. though, um, I really enjoyed, um, what's his face? <laughs> shit. I know. Uh, I it right now. Uh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the actor's name who played Jameson in, in the Tobey Maguire. Yeah, he's going to be a hard one to, to replace. He was that. awesome. Yeah. But he's now playing Commissioner Gordon in the next Batman movie, which is interesting. But yeah, he was he was like a perfect Jameson. Yeah, he was good. He was. <laughs> I can't think of what the hell his name is either. I know. I love. I he's a great actor too. You know what's you know what was sad the other day? I was talking. I was trying to show my niece um, some Jeff Goldblum because she didn't know who he was, and I was like, "Oh, you have to see something." I can't remember what we were talking about. But anyway, later on after that, I went to go. Oh, you know that guy I was talking about? I totally forgot Jeff Goldblum's name. Oh man, I felt <laughs> I know so terrible. I'm like, what? Like, come on, it's Jeff Goldblum, but... You know. I couldn't pull it out. I was thinking of the movies he's in. I, <laughs> I was like, that dude that I love, what's his name? Fucking Jehoshaphat. What? Jehoshaphat. <laughs> totally didn't... I was like, what's going on, man? Is it J.K. Rowling? <laughs> no, that's the that's the Harry Potter, the woman who wrote Harry Potter, right? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? J.K. Simmons. Yes, that's okay. it. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I know. This. <laughs> Holy J.K. Rowling, what? She played a pretty good Jameson. Uh, <laughs> so the next question is, as we mentioned before, uh, Flash Thompson. What What are they going to do with him? Uh, see, it Hopefully says, not much. It says he's less of a physical threat and more of an arrogant rival who is always ready with an insult. insult. But then they're asking the same thing we asked. I mean, can... I don't see him going down the the Flash Thompson no. route. I feel like they made that a dead end. I feel like they kind of did too. I mean, he could factor in, but I don't. Like, I feel like he'll just kind of fall off the. Yeah. And then next question is also one we had. Uh, will Ned Leeds become the Hobgoblin at some point? Who knows? I don't know, man. He's going to do some fucking cardio or something. I know, right? <laughs> I ain't one... making fun of the chunky people, you know. Because <laughs> we are. Yeah. But we are the chunky people. We are the chunky people <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, but I don't know. That'll be. I mean, that has to be further down the road. That's oh, like, yeah, way further. Yeah. That's way too early for that shit. So the next the next question they ask I'm not really that concerned with is where's Gwen Stacy? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like nah. Yeah, it's I feel too like soon. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's Just, too close to the last ones. Yeah, where they yeah and they yeah. Now here's the next one is how f- how famous is Aaron's nephew? Uh, Donald Glover character. Uh, 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 what is this shit? Ugh, fucking ads. Donald Glover plays Aaron Brown, who eventually dons the costume of the Prowler. However, what's more intriguing is the reason he cites for his decision to give Spider-Man the location of Vulture's operation. He wants to protect his nephew from the villain and his weapons. Why is this intriguing? Because his nephew is none other than Miles Morales, who becomes another Spider-Man in the comics. Originally in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. But then has been brought over to the Marvel 616. That's the main Marvel universe for you non-comic people. <laughs> so so that could potentially bring in the Prowler and Miles Morales, which would be kind of cool. This but is always... that's way too early for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's way too early. <clears throat> so the next question is, has we seen the last of Liz? Because after the vulture is captured and put in jail Liz and her mom move for some reason they moved to fucking Oregon I'm like why Oregon that's what I was thinking why the fuck would you want to go to Oregon other than it's completely on the other side of the country I guess so will we see her honestly I don't care if we do or not yeah. I mean she was an okay character it's not that I didn't like her but I'm like yeah Meh. I don't think she's she was like his 
true love or anything. It just yeah, kids true like to love. Just, they just fucking move on. You know? Right. Yeah. But if they do anything with the vulture, they're probably not going to do it to the third movie. Bring him back. You know. Right. So yeah. he might, she might play in somewhere there. But yeah, maybe. I don't know if they're setting up an arc for him to come back and be like, oh. "You don't fucked up my life, Spidey." What the hell is? That? <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. Okay. Um, so the next question is, will Shocker and Tinkerer return? And May looked at it really quickly. And <laughs> I thought it said, will Shocker and Tinkler return? <laughs> uh, Tinkler. Uh, uh, Why does he keep pissing on my shoes? <laughs> he just runs up to people and like pisses on their shit. <laughs> I'm not Tinkler. Beware. Uh, so, yeah, will they return? Who knows? I gotta think. I think so. Maybe not necessarily the Tinkerer, um, but I think they built. They kind of mm. built up the Shocker. I think they spent a little, a little bit of time on the Shocker. That it'd be kind of a waste to not have him show up again at some point. Plus, if they start building the Spidey universe there, then right, yeah, just have all the and you know all of them around doing their thing, right. And I would <laughs> like to see the Tinkerer return, um, but I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they do not bring him back. But the Shocker, I would definitely, definitely, definitely think they would bring him back. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't kill off your shit, man. Keep him around. Right. That's the whole... You gotta build that resentment. Right. He is. Right. You can't just meet a motherfucker. That's right. And kill him. You know it. That doesn't do nothing. No. It kills the story. That's right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Unless you, you know... Well, I know it's in the movies. They're not planning on making... Well, they would. They probably would like yes, to make, yes. you know, 10 if they could, but... Well, yeah, but... They uh, think a 2 for the moment on a lot of stuff. Mm. Yeah, just kill them. Then the next one is, as I mentioned, says Return of Damage Control. And I have... I've always kind of liked Damage Control in the Marvel Universe. I don't know how much you know of them. Um, a little bit. I mean, I they had, they've had their own... I think they've had a couple of miniseries and stuff, but it's always kind of fun. Like, they, they, you know, they go in, they clean up after the... the when there's a big superhero super villain fight um <clears throat> and as i said they were supposed to be making a sitcom type show like a comedy type show i don't know if it was necessarily a sitcom but like a comedy type show but then it kind of fell off the map and I, nobody's heard anything in, a, in quite some time and i don't know if that's even still going to be a thing now um but they did introduce damage control in spider-man so does that mean that there won't the the show damage control show has been killed or like or maybe they, they were using us as a hey damage a, control like a spin. as seen in Spider Man yeah maybe or did they do like the opposite of the Inhumans where the Inhumans is going to be a movie and now is going to be a TV show was damage control going to be a TV show but now they just decided to bring it into the movie universe or I do kind of like your idea they they can use the Spider Man tie in. Remember you saw him in the in the Spider Man. The, they were in the Spider Man. Well, now they got Tiny a show. Kelly. Although they didn't play him for <clears throat> comedic. Yeah. Well, they didn't really show too much. No. Them. Yeah. And it, yeah. So it could. Well, be. I don't know because they had Tyne Daly, which I mean. Yeah, which is cool. I mean, she's a she's a pretty prominent TV actor actress. So I don't know. This maybe, is true. Yeah. Maybe there is some way that she plans on being. That a yeah, that's it. a good point. Actually, I'm completely talking about my ass right now. No, <laughs> no, no yeah, exactly. We're just kind of speculating here. Yeah, and actually, that would be a kind of a cool way to to just Jackson Pollock and men <laughs> Pollocking it, man, <laughs> throwing paint at the canvas. But jow, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, I don't know if she plans on had it, there was any connection to her to the show, but maybe that would be a cool way to actually finally connect the TV and movie universes. Like they're supposed to be. I wish we knew so more we'll about see. this whole Marvel Sony connection. I mean, I know how long that that plans on right, being yeah, thing, you know, yeah, and what the what what the future holds for that. Yeah, because I have no fucking idea. <laughs> right I know. Now. I don't know how that's ending or what's going to happen. It's funny too because we when we first heard about it, we were like, "Yes, finally they're doing it." But now, once again, it's a big question mark. What are they doing? Like, they're doing it, but are they doing it? <laughs> and also, are they going <laughs> to keep the, the shocker and the tinkler? <laughs> <laughs> Why they're doing it? <laughs> the shocker and the tinkler. Tinkler. Uh, so. I like that. Just a villain that runs around and pisses on shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the 
fucking, I'm the tinkler. <laughs> Pissed on my shoes, man. <laughs> Your mail just opens the mailbox, pisses in there, and runs away. <laughs> You'll never catch me. <laughs> Twirling I'm his the little mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's out there having a burger right there in a cookout. Just runs over and pees on her. Yeah. <laughs> I beat <laughs> your grandma. Bitches. And a potato salad. <laughs> You'd have to have like pants with like a quick open fly. <laughs> the tinkler. <laughs> and just an IV of fucking um, Mountain Dew or something. Just to <laughs> constantly keep them ready to go at any time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like Bane. But it's, just all, it's like fucking Mountain yeah, Dew. Yeah, but it, yeah. Oh man, this is getting weird. <laughs> the so, tinkler. The tinkler. You gotta fucking uh, copyright that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should. So the next question is Will the scorpion sting? And the question what's the question we had? Is, are they gonna do the scorpion? I think so. I think they gotta. I, Again, don't think they, I don't know. Like, do you think they'll do the whole suit thing? I think they will. No, I don't know. Maybe like a version, like a modern updated version of the suit. I don't know. That makes me nervous. Kind of like a vulturized version. But I got to imagine, as I said with Shocker, they spent they spent a good bit of time excuse me, bringing him into the Spidey universe. So I got to think they're not going to waste that and just never show him. Yeah, I definitely now, think they feel like he factors now into this the is future. Fun. They have a, a picture here. It's It's the scorpion in the comic book, but it has the actor's face on it there. <laughs> it's weird looking. <laughs> it's like a fucking man bun or something. With all the <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. So I have to imagine that they will, at some point, bring in the Scorpion. Will yeah. he be the main one of the main villains in the next movie? Maybe he he has a beef with Spider Man now. His, his vagina is a little sandy. Yes, towards so Spider Man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, the next question is, will Aunt May join Team Spidey? Um, as we said, he disco- she discovered he w- Peter was Spider-Man at the end of the movie. So, now the question is, now that Aunt May knows Peter's secret, how will things change for the youngster? They will probably be their, there will probably be the requisite I forbid you from doing this period of time. Though, chances are that this particular conflict will be resolved off-screen. Then again, Marissa Tomei's May is the epitome of middle-aged cool. She may not have the expected overprotective reaction. In fact, it's easy to imagine her helping Peter in whatever manner she can, even if this just means packing meals for his long <laughs> nights of crime fighting. <laughs> yeah, maybe just a bit of butter and jelly. So, what do you think about her as Aunt May? I liked her. I kind of like. I kind of like. I kind of like the young, younger Aunt May thing going. They kind of yeah. again. They kind of did that in Spider Man. Yeah, the Ultimate, right? Uh, Ultimate Spider Man, yeah. And I guess well, it makes sense too. If he, I mean, well, that's another thing. I don't think he's gonna be around for until he gets older. But if he was older, it would make you know she'll be older. And... Right? Yeah. Because really, she should in the comics she should be dead. If Sorry. She's a Sorry immortal. She's a vampire. Yeah. I think she has died actually, but yeah. But yeah, like when he was a kid, she yeah, was she has already actually old. died. Yeah, yeah she was but... already an old lady when when he was a kid. Yeah. So what is she now? He's in the comics. He's maybe he's got some crazy shit like a uh, Norman Bates show. <laughs> <He's> act- <laughs> he thinks he's alive, but she's really just propped in a window, and he just swings in and goes, "Oh man, I'm sorry, I'm late for dinner again." But she's really been dead for a Peter, long time. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Peter, Peter, Peter! Don't go near that girl. She's a whore. <laughs> in in uh, the well, comics, yeah. she's actually married to J. Jonah Jameson's father. Oh yeah. So J. Jonah Jameson and Peter are actually. Step brothers now. I think I remember. I think you do. So, uh, I like my psycho angle. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Actually, I do too. Uh, <laughs> How twisted would that fucking be? That would be fucking awesome. So the next next question is, where's Harry? And again, uh, yeah, F Harry, man. I don't. I don't think they need him right now. I think we need. Yeah, they don't need him now. No. I do want the Green Goblin though, but yeah, yeah. And finally, the number one question they have that I... Eh, is Michelle the MJ? I don't know. Well, it would be weird to have two MJs. It would. So, maybe so this, one way or this another... This universe is MJ. Maybe. Because they're not... So one way or another, they're not going to have um, Mary Jane. 
unless Zendaya is somehow Mary Jane. Because, as you just stated, they're not going to have two Mary Janes. Well, this is going to be MJ, not Mary Jane. Right. Right. So, I don't know. I still... That that one still bothers me because I don't understand what they're going for there. And she's very... Because she's very un-Mary Jane. Yeah. As well. Yeah, like I wouldn't care if he was just, you know, a possible relationship or something. But to be in Mary Jane, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, she's not. She's a little more, not not necessarily tomboyish, but like, mm, she definitely has a different attitude than, than Mary Jane overall. Yeah, so it's weird. I don't know how much they want to stick to the story or what, you know. Yeah. That, so that one just confuses me. So I'm not thrilled about that one there. And plus it was the whole thing of, you know. Same bullshit they did with uh, Cumberbatch there and... It's not con. Yes. Yes. Exactly. It is con, you fucks. It's not con. No, it is con. It's con. No, it's not con. Is it con? Well, it's not con, but is it con? <laughs> eh. Oh, look. I just watched the movie. It's con. Yeah, fucks. <laughs> Anybody home? <laughs> so. Which I can't even get on that because I'm like, what? It's supposed to be the same <laughs> universe. How the fuck is <laughs> Cumberbatch in anything like con? Ricardo Montalban. He's not like him at all. It's supposed <laughs> to be the same fucking thing. I know, it's completely different. It doesn't make sense. And it hurts my brain when I think about it. Because they're so opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of a... Uh, this is kind of a con thing, too. A little bit. With the... Yeah. It kind of feels like that same kind of... Yeah. No, it's not her. It's not her. No, it's yeah. not... It's not Mary Jane... See, that's really... It's not It's not Mary Jane, wink, 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 ow. <laughs> they pulled some political shit right there, they fucking man. pulled a muscle... Yeah, no shit, right? They pulled a muscle in their eyelid from all the winking. Uh, Put that eyelid up to a car battery with a... <laughs> 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 Working overtime. Crack <laughs> 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 <It's laughs> walnuts in there. <that. laughs> it's blinking so fast. It's, it's not Mary Jane. Is it Mary Jane? It's not Mary Jane. Wait. Is that? Are you doing Morse code with your eyes? <laughs> there, because <laughs> ding ding ding. <laughs> it's not it really Mary Jane. Her, really her, her name is Michelle, which starts with an M. What's her last name? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Could be Jones. So it's it's Mary Jane. It's not Mary Jane. We lied. It fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, it's fucking Mary Jane. <sighs> I don't get it. I just, I don't get why they would do that. <clears throat> I don't know. And I think, for some reason, I think that's the thing that bothers me the most of, out of everything. I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, it doesn't and bother me And I don't know why. Much, but... I don't, I think, it's not, it's not that, it's not that they, it's, it's not even that the whole, oh, call me MJ thing. It's that, it's the whole magic act that they tried to do with it. I'm just like, I mean, I don't know. Well, I can't remember, but I, yeah, I do think that when they first was announced that people lost their shit or something. Yeah. Which I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I remember it something. It's always like the same stupid shit. Yeah. But then, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, whatever, man. I'm just like, keep making good <laughs> Spider Man movies. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, man. But it is weird. weird that all, no. It's weird, but. At least make whatever. your name fucking Mary Jesus. No That's shit. the one thing I don't. <laughs> I would actually rather see her be a whole new character. Because yeah. she was kind of cool the way she was. Like, if it, if it wasn't for the whole MJ thing, I would have been like, yeah, she was a cool character. Yeah, you could save that shit for later, man. Even though Mary she was Jane a little, stuff, little stalkerish. She was a little Peter yeah. Parker stalker. Peter Parker stalker. Peter Parker stalker. <laughs> man, well, how long have we been talking about this shit, man? I feel like this. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. Yeah, what the fuck? Well, anyway. Yeah, so I guess, I guess we've covered everything. So... I don't know if I had to give it a grade or a, or a, a, a number, which we don't really do. So fuck you. <laughs> no. I would, I would, I would give it at least. You know what? No, I'm, I'm not going to give it a number. I'm going to say our our rating is it's up there with Spider Man Two, Tobey Maguire Spider Man Two, but I'm not prepared to say it's better than Spider Man Two. But it's at least on the same level. There you go. There's your rating. Well, I'll say a number. I had one that popped in my head. Oh, so I'd say it's a solid eight out of ten, at least. Wow. Okay. All right. Cool. So if you want to do the eight out of ten thing? For me, right. I so, say at least that. 
Shut up, all right. All right, I got it. To me. Not anybody home? <laughs> all right, so. Eight out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> so an eight out of ten from Chris, my number one guy. You are my number one guy. So I guess that'll do it for us this week. Uh, once again, he's Chris. I'm Derek. We are the Keepers of the Fringe, and we are signing out. Bye. <laughs>